Pass over the line at the right side, centers it, scores! And here come the Bears inside the Brand Center. It's Sam Aremba centering pass from Boria Vallis. And that is your 2023 Teddy Bear Toss goal and scores! Jackson Vaughn right off the face off. Jackson Vaughn snipes in top corner. Wilson will chase the puck deep into the Broncos zone back to Anna Rem. Center, Spencer scores! That's the way to get your monkey off your back. First in 15 games for Ty Spencer. Welcome to Pat's Cast, the unofficial New Giant Pat's podcast. It's December 4th, it's episode 154. Chris here, Kevin there. How are we doing tonight? Oh, a lot better especially with the Pats kind of reclaiming the weekend, which was a nice a nice sign to see them at home and pick up a W on Teddy Bear Toss night. Yeah, it was nice to see some goals, a win, and some Teddy Bears, of course. Yep. Um, yeah, I guess uh, let's start with some uh, WHL news before we get into the Pats news. A uh, new commission coming in. That's, uh, that's big news. First one in 24 years. It's It's been a while. Ron Robinson's been around for... A very long time, which is okay. He, 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 I think he's done a pretty good job. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's obviously not just up to him to run this league. It's up to the Board of Governors as well and such. But, yeah, I mean, same guy for a long time. I mean, there's been some continuity or consistency across all three leagues with long-serving commissioners, and they're all on the out on the on the way out here within the next that, year or so that in itself is pretty interesting that they're all going at the same time yeah it is <laughs> right and then you see all the hockey canada stuff and yada 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 right it makes and you wonder if it's kind of a a time changing, for a, a shift the changing of the guard, guard or whatever yeah yeah right for sure so but uh yeah so dan near he coming in he's got hockey experience he's been with the NHL. He was just recently with Adidas. Like he's, he's got some, um, you know, some hockey background, which is what you want to see. That's all well, for sure. It's it's nice. I when I, when they 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 announced that Ron Robinson was going to re- retire, I was worried they're going to bring in someone that has nothing to do with hockey, just be like a marketing person or whatever. But I'm glad this guy's been around the hockey circle for quite a while. Like what? 2006 or whatever he was working with the NHL so yeah he worked there for 10 years I mean he is kind of a marketing guy right but he but he's worked with worked in hockey for quite a while it's not like he's coming from basketball or football or whatever it's an actual hockey guy yeah yeah fair yeah yeah so but yeah no so there was actually an interview on the Debra Show radio show if you listen to that uh, interview with Cami Kepke uh, the new, the newest WHL um, staffer. Uh, she's been doing some social media and stuff, and she has a pretty good interview with him. And he's said he's got some ideas, including you know trying to get some more people back in the stands, which is, you know is an issue it seems across the league, not just Regina. Um, you watch everywhere, some, yeah. You, you see some of those games where there's I think maybe except the like US, <laughs> the US I think draws pretty good, but it yeah. seems um, that it it's tough like it's looking rough like you watch moose jaw you watch medicine hat like brandon like yeah it's some ugly ugly crowds there but yes especially during the week it's really bad uh, yeah 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 so and he's uh he's young too right yeah, um he's he's younger than i am yeah yeah right i'm gonna be 45 and this guy's 43 yeah Yikes. so it, it definitely <laughs> and he's, is he, he's been um uh, um, the hockey news has put him in the people of influence or whatever for a couple times over the last like three years or something like that. So it's not yeah. like he's he's a nobody in hockey, nobody. the yeah, hockey yeah, yeah. world. So I look forward to hopefully seeing what he can bring to the table. I don't know. Board of Governors probably hasn't changed much. It's still run by a few guys that have been around for hundreds of years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they may limit what he can do with his ideas. So it'll be yeah. interesting. Yeah. But he'll have some fresh ideas for sure. So yeah, hopefully it brings us some different ideas. Definitely. 
Well, with that, we should uh, move on to some Pat, Pat's news. Uh, a new goalie in town. Um, obviously, I mean, I, there's, I mean, we might as well just talk about the UA thing as well. I think they bring in uh, Madden Muwaka from Prince George. He kind of, kind of was the odd man out there. Um, PG has a new hot young goalie in in Ravensburg. That, that, that's that stole the job, and he's he's stole stole it and ran with it. He's been unbelievable. Yeah. Right, um, five shutouts in what eleven or twelve appearances 12 games? or something yeah. like that. Like, it's, yeah, that's crazy. Those are insane numbers. It's unbelievable. I mean, it does help that he is playing with Prince George, a pretty strong but team. Still, his I know, goals I against average is like a, a goal better, and his save percentage is like fifty points better than their quote unquote starter. So, yeah, yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, good for him. Like he he's running yeah. with it. So I think, but PG, it's, it's nice. It's nice to bring in another goalie here, and he's in town, and he does have a little experience. Yeah, he has a little bit of experience. He's he was playing in Edmonton AAA. There he hasn't he hasn't played much there. Apparently, he maybe had a little bit of an injury. Yeah, but uh, it sounds like he's he's practicing and stuff, and probably ready to go when they when they call upon him, or whatever. So, yeah, he's got some I mean, size. He's only seventeen. He's got some size. He could be the goalie of the future. Maybe you never know. Maybe, maybe not. You never know. Like I don't know. Yeah, and I, I mean, want to. I want to see him in game action. I really. Yeah, do. no, for sure. Right. See what he can bring to the table. And yeah, he's gonna be. He's he's gonna be playing soon. Uh, he weighs gonna be gone to the World Junior. He's in the. What do they call it? The initial camp roster, preliminary roster, preliminary roster, whatever. For the, Switzerland, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know when, you know, their camp slash whatever they're doing starts there's no no timetable for that but i mean he That's could be out of here probably anytime. gonna be pretty soon yeah because world juniors start the 26th and it's in yeah. sweden too so yeah so he's one of two whlers uh leo Briard from lethbridge he got the he got the call as well so congratulations to both of those guys yeah and then there's one guy from the o and one guy from the q um, so yeah, that, that world juniors, that's, that's coming up soon here, you know? Yeah. It's so, unbelievable. Like it's, yeah, <laughs> it's I know like it's three, three December weeks away. 4th already. <laughs> yeah. December 4th already. Right. So three weeks, definitely. So three weeks away. we were kind of expecting that news. And then obviously with the trade, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, they're bringing in somebody to cover and then potentially, you know, be another option here with experience. And then once the world juniors is over, they're going to have three goalies and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Al's going to. Al Miller's gonna have uh, some decisions to make and yeah. plan plan for what's ahead. Mm-hmm. Maybe he goes back to AAA. You never know, Milwaukee. But uh, maybe they run with him and and move one of the other guys. You never know, right? Yeah. Who knows? Metis Nat right now has got three goalies, and they they continue to rotate through. So maybe maybe they'll stick with three. Yeah, until somebody. Who knows? Takes the reins and runs with it, right? He kind of had that opportunity, and he's faltered a bit here. And you know, maybe Pine will get a little more action and see what he can well, do. Well, Pine's it. definitely going to get more action when uh, UA has gone to the World Juniors. <laughs> so definitely, I expect obviously. him to carry carry most of the load. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. Anyways, well, let's get into these games. I mean, we have to talk about the Brandon game. Uh, I mean, the, the, the Wheat City Walleye game. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have to talk much about it. I didn't watch this game, <laughs> fortunately, I guess. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, that was not that was not a good uh, a good contest. Despite um, what uh, Brad thought of the game, he thought they played a pretty good game. Yeah, he he said I, that. Watching it on the TV or on the WHL Live, um, it did not look like a good game. But that's just what from it is. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's it's, it's from watching. You, you can't really tell what it's like in yes. the in the rink. It's tough, but yeah. A lot of players had a bad game, I I would think, I would say. And um, I'm sure Hue would like a couple of those goals back because a couple of them were very, um, stinky. very, very, very stinky. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, But like, okay, so you're down 3 nothing, but there was, it didn't seem like there was much offense. Um. Power play had six chances. I don't know what the power play looked like, but it's been struggling it lately. It was not a power play. 
That was very good. Okay. Right. And then they allowed three shorties. And then the story of the game, three shorties. Like they had only given up two all season and they were just recently. And now yep. to give up three in one game, that's oh, that's wild. Two to the same guy. <laughs> it was it was not it was not pretty. It was not pretty. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's ugly, but what but can it's you do? Of Brad, Brad Haroff thought the game was that they played a pretty good game. Yeah, I kind of talked to him about that after Saturday night's game, and and he said, "Oh, we didn't mind it too bad." Obviously, there was you know he said some uncharacteristic you know play by Huey, but I mean it's not always on the goalie as well. Like yeah, sure he gives up a couple bad ones, but I mean the, the, the team itself up. allowed seven and only scored one. So like yeah. Exactly. It's not right. just a goalie. I know no. it could have screwed up momentum. It's just like a bad power play, a bad penalty. That kind of stuff can change, yeah. swing things one way or the other. But yeah, it was it was not a it was a stinky game. Yeah, it's unfortunate because that's a game you you know you kind of you're going into that game thinking you can get a point or two. You know, it's it's going to be a, a should be a close game per se, right? You, you don't. You you wouldn't see a seven one game either way. You would think. Yeah, it shouldn't be. It they're the te- teams are pretty even. Yeah, overall I think, and for some reason the it just once Brandon got the lead, it just it deflated the pads and it just kept on deflating and deflating and it kind of snowballed, right? Yes, yeah. snowballed from there. It just it just seems like these road games these these last couple of weeks have just it just been ugly on the road for whatever reason, right? Like they have two road wins, so. <sighs> The road, I don't know. There's just it's a totally different Pats team on the road. Yeah, it's odd. They have they have no swagger on the road at home. They got the swagger. They got the I don't know. Well, I don't know what it is. What they got the home swagger? Cooking. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll just roll into Swift Current. I mean, it was it was an exciting game. I mean, it was back and forth. Uh, the Pats. It was up and down. I was back and forth. You know, Swift Current. Opens the scoring and the Pats respond and they get the teddy bear toss goal. Um, but then, you know, Swift Current scores again and it was just, it, it was a hockey game. Like, it was a good hockey game to watch, right? Like for the people that were there, it was, it was pretty exciting. Like lots of lead changes, lots of goals, yeah. some nice goals, some good goaltending. Both team, both goalies made some pretty nice saves. Definitely. It was, it was overall, it was good. I kind of thought, uh, Hue with only playing, the one period in Brandon, I thought maybe they go back to him, right? He, he got, you know, the early hook, and then okay, well maybe they'll just save him up for Saturday. And but Pine came back, and and after playing two periods in Brandon, and he 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 played pretty well. I thought he made some big saves. There was some good. Sukern had a lot of good chances. Yeah, most of most of the goals were decent quality goals, like a couple of rebounds. But that happens. Every goalie yeah. gives up rebounds. Yeah, the first one was that rebound and slid under the pad. I think it was. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, and then on the other side, Matthew Keeper, the old, the old Pat's, net the Pat's finder. goalkeeper, <laughs> goalkeeper. Yeah, I'm sure he he wants a couple goals back too, but he made some nice saves. He he kept Swift Current in the game. Yeah, definitely. When the Pats had the momentum and stuff, so got to give got to give props to him for. I mean, he he came he just came off a win against uh, the Messina Tigers. Like, yeah. I was. I think that was his return. The first game back that he started, I believe. I think so. Yeah. I think it was Tuesday night that they played. This was only his second. His only second game with Swift yeah. Current. And so yeah, it, t- it, it takes it takes a lot to come back to the place that traded you or whatever. And yeah, I mean, it wasn't like it wasn't like a bad trade. He got to go play in the Memorial Cup. So. Oh yeah. Can't, yeah, for sure. I don't think he's slighting the Pats by any means. No. But. No. He got it's, a good it's, opportunity. It's always it's always difficult, I think, to go back to where you where you started your career. Yeah, and he was there, you know, obviously for quite a while, right? Or here, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, he he hops back into WHL and and he gets medicine hat on. I think it was Tuesday night, and and they ended up winning five three. So it was good for him. Yeah, for sure. Uh but yeah, no, it it was a good game. You know, like I said, it it's nice to see that the Pats could respond. I mean, like I said, it at home they play well right like yeah and they, they've got like i said they got the swagger they have the ability to come back even when yeah. they're down and looking down and out all of a sudden they got the swagger they had speed i haven't seen them have on the road for a while so it yeah. was nice yeah it was kind of you know they they're they're up three two and then 
uh, Swift Current scores two quick ones uh, in the s- middle of the second period, and, and you're thinking, oh, okay, kind of here we go, right? And then, and then, then not till the third, Ty Spencer, a guy that really needs to get on the board, gets on the board Finally. early, early in the third, and that kind of maybe got the momentum, and then Berg scores, and then Swift Current comes back and ties it up late, and uh, um, it. Uh, they were just able to hang on and then take it to overtime. And then, I mean, overtime was like, ugh, that was boring. That was the worst kind of period ever. Overtimes are so boring, especially when they do their little loop. Back. I don't have an opportunity. And then they go back go in and go back go in and go back. Yeah, it was kind of, it was pretty rough. Um, and you said, you know, the NHL may be talking about changing the rules there, but I I think what what did I say we figured it out it was like sixty percent of the games end in the shootout in the WHL so it's not you know not the worst percentage but uh, I don't know I don't watch a bunch of NHL but I'm I'm sure it's the same kind of stuff right guys just yeah every, going back every, every time every time an NHL game goes to overtime it's so boring there's no excitement there at all they don't get an opportunity they skate it out. They take it in, no chance, skate it out. It's like, oh, it's so boring. <laughs> and you see how teams have adapted to that because like three on three at the start was like, oh, yeah, this is wide open. It's good, right? And then teams just go into that shell where they just don't want to give up a goal or don't want to give up a, an opportunity against. So, and then it turns into that, right? Just puck possession. Okay, we're not, we're not going to give it up for no reason. There's no dump and chase in three on three, right? Yeah, it's so. all all, pos- all possession and overtime. Yeah, it's yeah. So, and congratulations to Sam Aremba scoring the Teddy Bertoz goal. Yeah, one of his better games of the season, right? <laughs> probably his. I would probably say his best game of the season. Maybe the best game as a pap. He just seemed to be everywhere. Yeah, three on points. the puck, made some nice plays. Got a nice goal. Got the Teddy Bear Toss goal. It was nice. It was a very good game from him. Fifth yeah. Regina born Pat to score the Teddy Bear Toss goal. Jordan Jordan McGilvery, Matt Struby, Jordan Everly, and Riley Woods. It's awesome. I like yeah. the the Regina born guys getting that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, quite a few bears. It was a 23-44 20, or something. 24-33. 24-33. And yeah. It breaks Tanner Howe's streak of two yeah, Tanner Tosco's. But he, but he got an assist. assist. Yeah. He got an assist. He has three points, tying Jordan Wheel for most points on Teddy Bertos goals. Jordan Wheel had three assists. Nice. That's And Tanner Howe could potentially have another year Chance, or two. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Never know. So he could add to that maybe. We'll see how things go over the next few months. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did see... One person, maybe it was a dad, he tweeted out saying thanks to the Pats and Tanner House specifically for delivering a bear to his son. So that's cool. I retweeted that, came across that. So that was awesome. Yeah, it's um, good. They, they got out to the, the General Hospital Pediatric and a couple other places yeah. today, which was nice to see. And actually, you know what? I was in, I had knee surgery a couple of years ago, right, right before Christmas. Like it was like 21st or something. And so, you know, the wife and and my oldest daughter, we went down to the, the hospital to get checked in and stuff. And, and they even gave her a little bear. Like, it was like a packaged one. Like, it was a brand new one. Nice. Like just a tiny little one. And it said Teddy Bears Anonymous and stuff. And so she got a little one when I, when I went into the hospital. So nice. So that was kind of cool, cool. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, so a win. A win's a win. A win over uh, an Eastern uh, Conference team. team. But over a team that was on the rise, Swift Current has won yeah. some games lately. They've they've looked more like the way they should be. I think they're under a little underachieving, and they're finally turning things around. And the Pats got them. And yeah, yeah. I mean, the Pat, hopefully the Pats can keep the momentum up. Definitely. Uh, yeah, Swift Current's coming off the coaching change. If you didn't hear about that, they've they've moved on from their head coach, and and the assistant has taken over. Um, but yeah, maybe that sparks them but yeah pats are able to to get a win off them and and obviously it, it's better at home for the pats and you got a couple more games coming up this weekend at home so they they got to carry this momentum uh into that so oh, but definitely they they're 
on the road, they are not good. Yeah. They're 2-11 and 11 on the road. Ooh, yeah. That's and at home, they're 9-4, 1-1. Yeah. Like, that's a great record, especially for a team that's, you know, a little further down the standings. Yeah, and it's it's almost flip-flopped. Yeah. Like, the, the home and road, which is, yeah, two not road wins is not good. No. <laughs> They've lost what nine in a row on the road. Yeah, yeah something like I think that. It's nine. Yeah, and like we were talking, like it's only been a, a couple wins since Braxton Whitehead went out. Uh, that's another thing, right? Like he, I don't want to say he he stirs. He's the straw that stirs this drink, but I mean, like they've won is, four games since he's been injured. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> almost gone downhill a bit since his absence, right? Like. Yeah, like he wasn't he wasn't lighting the world on fire, but I seven mean, goals, twelve games, he's still tied for second in the team in goal scoring. That's that's rough. Yeah, and he's he's missed what what is it sixteen games? Sixteen so. games, yeah, yeah. So I mean, the way it looked, especially on the road, it's like I don't think anybody, even uh, a certain ninety eight, could help this team. You know? Yeah, like, like some of those games were just not even not yeah. even worth uh, so. anything but but going back to the previous week if the pass would have played like they did against red deer in edmonton they would have won that game easily yeah no for sure right but they just, played like we said they played one period they played the first period and just put it on coast yeah right so you get a win there like that should have been a win right and obviously medicine that's tough going in there so that wasn't you know we weren't expecting too much there and, and red deer was winnable and they almost did or at least they almost took it to overtime at least. So so it wasn't, you know, terrible on the road, but yeah, it wasn't great either. But yeah, I guess before we get too far ahead, we will listen to Aremba, Howe, and uh, Heroff after the Swift Current game here. Well, Brad, got to win here at home. First time playing at home in a while. How's it feel? Uh, great. I think uh, just to get the monkey off her back. Um, also, we haven't gotten the results we wanted. I think we've been playing good hockey in between, um, but we just got the guys, you know, scoring on their chances right now, and that's what difference was tonight. The improvement in the power play scored a goal, but just overall, your thoughts on that? That has been struggling for you guys. Well, yeah, they got got that goal, and at the first period, they weren't getting us much momentum. It's kind of been stale like that for us lately here. Um, but yeah, we stuck through it. Uh, we've been talking about frustration and managing our emotions and not being frustrated, and I think we did a great job of it tonight. With a quick turnaround from last night, was that did you like the response from last night? Uh, yeah, like I, I liked your game last night. It, it wasn't as bad as the score, and I know I keep on repeating that, but it, it, it's that's the truth. And um, uh, we just didn't score on our chances. Had a couple goals go in that you know were uncharacteristic of you know Huey's game of late. He's been really good for us, and he's made a lot of those big saves. It just was one of those things. It just wasn't going our way last night. But I like the way that we were real mature. We you know earlier in the season we started to take penalties, started to get frustrated, and let the frustration take over our game. But I think we've learned that lesson the start of the year, and we've really uh, come a long way in that department. How cool was it to score the teddy bear goal tonight? Yeah, it was pretty exciting. Um, it goes to a good cause, right? So to see the bears fall from the stands onto the ice is a surreal experience and it doesn't happen very often. Have you delivered the bears before? No, I haven't. Um, I heard that uh, we will be doing that this year, so that's something I'm excited to do too. And just, just first time at home in a while, how'd that feel to win one in front of the home crowd? Yeah, that was big. Obviously, we've been on a rough stretch here lately and it's uh, been tough for our team. So to win that game, especially in a shootout, nail biter game, come through some adversity down a couple times. It's uh, it's big for our team and we want to keep on rolling into practice this week and uh, games coming up. Three points for you tonight. Uh, it's been, as a whole, the team has struggling offensively lately, but how do you think your game has come along? Yeah, I thought it's it started to build um, in the past few games here. Um, I Yesterday I thought I was a little bit snake bitten. We had a couple opportunities where uh, it was the exact same play as the teddy bear do- toss goal, and it went right over my stick or went through the crease. So um, kind of a sigh of relief, and it feels good for sure. Just a power play goal, power plays been struggling. How nice was that to just get one again? Yeah, that was even better. I think everybody can see that, that it's uh, it's been tough for us. Um, and like I said yesterday in Brand, we had a, a number of opportunities in that backside on the, on the zone entry, which is something that has been a positive for us on the power play. Um, so to get one today, 
I know we didn't get another one after that, so it's uh, it's something to build off of. I know we got a week to work on it here, so that's uh, that's good. How about a guy like Spencer get one? He hasn't scored in a while either. So. Yeah, it's always exciting to see a guy score when he's snake bitten, right? Uh, it's happened to me a couple times. It happens to everyone, right? So when someone puts it in the back of the net, you're very happy for them. Um, it's stressful. You squeeze your stick, and for uh, for him, it was uh, a big goal too. Tanner, a little jealous you didn't get the teddy bear goal this time around. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously I wanted it, but uh, it was good to see Samo get it. Uh, he deserved it so much. He's been playing so good for us for the last few games, so it's uh, awesome to see him getting super pumped. Snapping a six-game losing streak here, first time at home in a while. How did, how did it just feel to get a win again? Yeah, uh, I mean, unreal. Uh, the, the guys in the room right now are, are loving it and having fun, but, I mean, it's uh, just the start of, start of this, so, uh, yeah, we got to have a good week of practice and keep going. What's, what's the difference between home and road here? Kind of started lately and come back here. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know the difference, but obviously we, we have a better record at home. So, yeah, I think uh, the fans help a lot here. I mean, they're, they're energetic and, and all those things. But, yeah, obviously we gotta, we got to be better on the road and those sort of things. So. With a three-game home streak, it's a good time to get a springboard effect going on. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, when we play at home, we're, we're on our best game, so I think it's going to be huge for us to play the next two games here. Was it getting a little tense, guys squeezing the sticks too tight the, the last few games? Does, does it settle in at all when you know, lose the streak? Hey, yeah, I mean, a little bit. I mean, guys uh, kind of grip their sticks too hard, like you said. I mean, if, if we're not scoring, or other guys not scoring. So it was, uh, it's a good night to get a, get, a, get a lot of goals in our group, so it's uh, get some confidence back and all those sort of things. All right. Thank you. Some indecision with your stick choice again tonight as you the white one, I went to the black one and shoot up. That's uh, what's happening there. Yeah, well, I, I broke my black one and only had that white one on the on the bench, so I just used that for, I think it was two shifts or whatnot. But, yeah, I put that white one in retirement for, for now. So. <laughs> All right, so I guess looking ahead to those home games coming up this just weekend. another thing. I, they were talking on the radio that Whitehead was back to Whitehead. They were talking about that he had an appointment with his surgeon or doctor or whatever this week yeah, yeah. to see where he is maybe he's back sooner than later maybe he's back this weekend yeah what was the uh, six to eight still um yeah on last week it's been it's been six to eight weeks for the yeah. last like three or four so but he was supposed to uh, from what i understand he was supposed to have an ap- appointment this yeah, week december 4th i thought i heard yeah it was dante mentioned it on the radio or, or yeah, he, no, read so it somewhere it was in his interview in uh when he interviewed Braxton yeah, the, live on the road there. Yeah, Braxton was talking about it. So he'll be coming back with the full, full cage or uh, the bubble. The sorry, bubble. The, the, the bedard bedard bubble. bubble. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> but you've seen some pictures of him out and about in the community, and you see the right side of his face is is dinged up still. So. Oh yeah, it'll it'll be like that for a while. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but getting him back in the lineup will be a big spark. I yeah, I think so. I know he was just an alternate, just an alternate, but it seemed like they 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 lost him. They lost a lot. It was just weird. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not taking anything away, anything away from his game, not saying he's a good player or not, but, I mean, I didn't think that he made that much of a difference, but I guess we'll see when he does come back what, what he does per se. But he's, he, he's, he's a veteran, and he yeah. was on fire. He had seven goals in 12 games. Yeah. No, for sure. And he had an A. He was a really good face-off guy. So yeah. all of a sudden, you lose him. And it just messes yeah. everything up. The continuity, the... The lines have just been a jumble ever since, almost. What do you want to call it? And then all of a sudden, every other game, it's the lineup at Blender. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Getting him back will be a big, a big lift, I think. Especially in the dressing room, I think he's. I think he's got a a, a big voice in the dressing room. He's been around okay. for a long time. And yeah, and I might. He's obviously around the team. He's back. He went home, like we said last week. He went home for a while, and and now he's back with the team. He's on. He was on the road trip last week, right? So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so maybe he can inspire from off the ice for now until he gets back in the lineup here. Yeah, and well, they still have they still have the rest of the week off for him to get that much healthier if he is well if he is ready to play this weekend hey yeah and then you got the christmas uh, break coming up right like and i'm not saying he's going to be there before or, or not but yeah you know, we don't know for sure but you never know 
just keep an eye out for the yeah. 52 in the lineup. Hopefully sooner rather than later. That'd be nice. Yeah. It would be. But yeah, so coming up, I guess you got Kamloops and Kelowna. So two new teams out of the West that we don't see very often. I haven't seen them in a long time. Um, Kamloops is not doing very well after their their uh, Memorial Cup hosting duties last year. They've They're got, going all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've and then some. S- yeah, 7, 16, 3, and 2. But I mean, that's, you know, you don't want to take them lightly. You take Edmonton lightly and you lose twice to them in, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so, and with Edmonton with all their injuries, <laughs> it yeah. makes it look that much worse. <laughs> exactly, right? Losing their top score, losing this guy, losing that guy, and they still take a couple wins off the Pats. Um, but yeah, and then the next night you got Kelowna in town, and then you got some star power there. You got Andrew Crystal, Bedard's buddy there. He he's been in and out of the lineup a bit this year, and then Tisha Ginla, like who he's he's really starting to tear it up. Yeah, he's got what twenty goals or whatever this year already. It's uh, what has he got this year? Pretty good numbers. Yeah, for a seventeen, he's got uh, yeah twenty and eleven in twenty-seven games. And they they've got a decent goaltender uh, kicking in. He's yeah. doing pretty pretty well. But they are they are three games under five hundred as of right now. So they're kind of on the the down. I don't know. They're kind of in the same boat as the Pats. They're Almost, only three yeah. games. They're only a few games under 500. They're not that far from the top kind of thing. Well, I guess not the top because Prince George and Wenichi are starting to run so, away with it over there. Yeah. But but they're not, yeah, no, they're in that middle kind of ground, right? But they do have some, some decent players uh, as well. So some, some guys that you probably want to go out and see play. Because you know you might might not see him again, come this yeah. way. <laughs> Gabriel Stutz. Yeah, him as well. <laughs> he definitely um, will be back. He's no. twenty. <laughs> yeah, and an import. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, Prince George Wenatchee starting to starting to take off from the rest of the pack. Uh, Prince George is just scoring, 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 and Wenatchee's starting to really score as well. Now they've got Savoy back. I don't know if Benson's coming back, but uh, I don't know if they even need him. <laughs> Obviously, they'll take him, but, like, you know, they're doing pretty well without him. Yeah, and, uh, yeah they're they're starting to get rolling. Yeah, the East is still kind of tight. There's kind of pockets of teams. Uh, Sestu's kind of has got a three-point lead on, on Medicine Hat. But um, then Medicine Hat, Moose Jaw, PA, Lethbridge, they're all within six points. Yeah. So Current's within seven. Brandon's within seven. So it's... It's very, it's, it's very close. It's yeah, it's very tight, top to bottom, basically, except for kind of Edmonton's the outlier there, but uh, they've obviously got their issues, um, as well. So, but yeah, I don't know what else have we got this week there, Kevin. Ah, I'm not sure. I think that's about it. This is the last. These two games this weekend are the last two before Christmas. So if right. you want to see the Pats before Christmas, get out this weekend. Get to yeah. see two BC teams that haven't been here since like 2019. Get yep. out and see them if you want to. If you want to catch the Pats before Christmas, yeah, because then they're on the road. Another uh, a three and three in Alberta, and then they come back out of the Christmas break with uh, at Brandon at Moose Jaw, and then they're home on the 30th, whatever day that is. <laughs> the stupid schedule doesn't have the day on it. Saturday, so they're home it's a Saturday, s- Saturday the 30th. They're home to to Brandon, and then Moose Jaw is here on on New Year's Day. Yeah. So you got Brandon Moose Jaw, kind of four games right out of the Christmas break. So that'd be uh, some tough games there. I mean, this Alberta trip will be gonna be tough too, right? Oh yeah. See see, see how they play, right? Yeah, hopefully, if they if they play like they did against with Current, they should do well this weekend. And if they can keep the momentum up, somehow carried onto the road, right? Yeah, they, they need to they need to turn it around the road. They're pretty strong at home. They're actually really strong at home. One of the better better home teams. Yeah, for sure. Is like not. It. Yeah, it's not good. But yeah, definitely this this road record is oof, ugly. But well, one other thing, Teddy Bear Toss, they wore the red jerseys for the first time this year. Yeah, it was it was a surprise. 
<laughs> yeah. They didn't say anything, didn't announce it. All of a sudden, they came out with the Reds. Like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> I know there's been some jersey availability issues. So, I mean, maybe they had enough for the new guys. I mean, probably a couple of recycled ones and and were able to put together a set and, and wear the Reds. You kind of figure they got, or they, they, they got some new stuff. Or maybe they got some new ones. Possible. Because they, they were talking that teams, not just the Pats, that teams were supposed to be getting new jerseys before January. So maybe. Maybe that's maybe what they got it was. some already. Yeah. Um, no, I had a I had a thought there, but I, I lost it. But uh, <laughs> oh, they usually wear you know Tabor toss big game, you know lots of pictures. So wear their alternates, one of their alternates now. Yeah. So, but yeah, not like else? not like Edmonton where they had the, the teddy bear teddy bear jerseys, teddy bear uniform like they had those shells were, those and were socks. Weird. <laughs> that was that was different. Definitely, but they've always done a Teddy Bear jersey. Yeah, um, Calgary that, that always was, does that it. Was, that was even yeah more wild. different than normal. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah, no. That's and for sure. I, I, I would have hated to have been the the play by play guy because those numbers were hard to read. Well, and where you sit in Edmonton, you sit <laughs> five miles say, away, especially, especially way up there. It's it's I could just imagine. Bring your binoculars, or you got to do the game <laughs> off the screen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine doing that. Yeah. Dante was saying the last time he was having issues in uh, in Edmonton reading the jersey regular, numbers. Yeah, just with regular jerseys, right? Because the red numbers on the blue jerseys for the Pats are kind of difficult at times to see for sure, unless you know for sure who the player is. It's, it's yeah, it's a little tricky. Yeah. All right, you got anything else for this week? No, that's what we're going to pick our uh, goals, pr- predict our goal scorers for the weekend. Yes, forgot about that. We, talked about that and yeah kind of kind of pick a couple guys they hope to see score and and give them kind of a shout out or kind of go from there so who's your pick uh for friday against Kamloops, i'm gonna say anthony wilson's gonna score his first the pats okay and i'm gonna go with spencer his old team he got one last game he's gonna he's gonna get another one here get him rolling i uh, hope so he needs to he needs to get keep keep going he needs to build on his his goal last game he had some nice chances got that goal Did has some he had a lot of chance we 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 didn't mention that but yeah he had a lot of chances and we're just like oh oh come on like get one here but he, like, he finally buried it you yeah. could tell he was super happy even though the lights as soon as he scored the lights went off and they did the little new light, light show light thing show? yeah he jumped into the glass and everybody yeah. like bashed into him it was it was it was nice to see he finally got it I think, yeah. and hopefully the momentum kid keeps going, and he gets on a streak. It'd be nice. Go on a, go on a, go on a tear. Yeah. All right. Who you got against uh, Kelowna? You pick first this time. Okay, I'll go with Jackson Vaughn. He he scored in the current game as well. Maybe a guy that uh, taking on a lot more uh, responsibility. You know, especially with Whitehead out there, he's moved to center and he chips in a goal, and maybe he can chip in another one here. I like. Yeah, to he's see he's, that. Been, he's been he's been playing well lately, yeah. and yeah, hopefully he can get on a get on a roll, get a bunch of these other guys on a roll, and maybe get back to the way they were playing the first part of the season. Get yeah. out of the get rid of the funk of these last whatever sixteen games and get back to the first twelve. <laughs> yeah, right. my pick for uh, Kelowna, I'm going to pick Pesket to score against his old club. There you go. Might as well. Yeah. He's, his second goal for the Pats. Might as well pick the boy. He go back and light the lamp against his old club. No, that sounds good. All right. I don't think there's anything else I got on the list. I think I think we're pretty good. No, yeah. But it was a. It's yeah, been. It was week. a better week than the last couple of weeks. So hopefully. We'll call this an up week, and hopefully we have another up week to talk about next yeah. weekend. I mean, it couldn't got any worse than last week, right? So. Yeah, exactly. But it had to go up. So it, it was a, it was a, at least it was an exciting game. They got a W yeah. against a team that they needed to get a W, w against. against. Yeah, a team right around you in the standings, right? They needed to get get Some the momentum going, back. get something going, and yeah, good. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy with that week. Yeah. Not happy with the Brandon game overall, but I'm happy they were able to rebound on Saturday and not just give up, fold up the tents, and go home. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, with that, we'll get out of here, and we'll see you guys at the rink on the weekend. Take it easy. And here.
here is the captain, Tanner Howe, for the winner. If he scores, we are going home and snapping a six game losing streak. Listen to the crowd. Crowd on their feet. Tanner Howe walks in. Backhander, ah. scores!